Hello, welcome to the talk about NATS. Uh, my name is Valdemar Quevedo, working at Sanidia Communications. And in this talk, I'm going to talk, you, talk to you about the NATS V2.2 release, which is what we call the Jetstream release. Uh, much in the making um, since uh, much of uh, 2020 and, and 2019. Uh, we're very proud of, uh, of this release and hope you like what you'll see. So in this talk, I'm gonna co cover about, talk about the, uh, give a brief, brief intro to Nets. And then also I'm gonna cover how to get us started with gesturing, what it is and some of its uh, background, followed by a Q and A after this uh, session. So if you're not familiar with Nets, uh, briefly, it is a high performance messaging system uh, made for developers and operators so that they can focus more on building their applications rather than uh, how to do the messaging. So from the beginning, um, NATS is um, already a 10 year old project. It's one of the earliest uh, CNCF projects. Uh, since the beginning, some of its traits was to have be performant, have be very simple, have uh, be very secure and always be available, like an uh, always available dial tone has multiple qualities of service, uh, multiple communication patterns, as I'm gonna cover in a bit. And uh, thanks to the simple protocol has uh, multiple client implementations. It is a single binary, uh, just a 10 megabytes. Um, it's a TCP based plain text protocol. These are all the verbs uh, from the protocol, um, which has stayed the same throughout uh, many years. It takes very little to configure nets. You, as a client, you only need the URL and the credentials. There is uh, gossiping and a lot of uh, things that um, make uh, NAT deployments be very flexible and have a uh, very uh, long uh, uptimes. So a straightforward API. And from the NATS v2 series, it has a uh, security uh, multi and multi-tenant uh, accounts uh, isolations of the subjects, namespaces. And also it supports uh, multiple arbitrary uh, network topologies, which is a very advanced uh, powerful pattern that we call the NATS adaptive edge architecture. So you can have a silo of uh, NATS clusters and those um, be able to be connected to another remote cluster in another, another uh, data center and expand into a super cluster types of setups and then you can have uh, what we call the leaf nodes connections that can be outside of the super cluster or uh, create a home spoke topology so that you can have um, like a centralized NATS cluster and then through the leaf nodes, they can all communicate, all the clients can still uh, communicate. So you can, all of these three building blocks, the NATS server, super cluster, gateways and leaf nodes, um, you can use them to map into the uh, your architecture or the needs of your uh, organization. Uh, NATS at this core is about the streams and services. So NATS, um, in, in NATS you have a flow of data which you can uh, fan out and you can have uh, services which is basically do some work and return a result. These can both be load balanced. In terms of the publish uh, the client API, you can publish and subscribe, uh, which is what we call the streams. You can also request and the request response and on services. And both of those can be load balanced so that you can uh, publish a message or make a request. And then only one actor for a set of uh, clients is gonna uh, handle that message. Uh, request response is uh, sending um, uh, a message inspecting a single one uh, response. Publish, you can broadcast into a number of uh, members from a group. And queue subscribers is the load balancer where only one of them will receive it. This is a very classic NATS uh, since the uh, V1 series, um, which is an at most once uh, delivery. So in terms of delivery guarantees, NATS, uh, which uh, ensures that you, you have to be connected into NATS to be able to uh, receive a message. So the NATS uh, server means that um, we'll hold some, the message um, for a certain 
number of uh, for some time, but you have to be connected and consume that message. Otherwise, uh, you can become a, a slow consumer. You you have to avoid becoming a slow consumer. So, if in case there is no one when and we make a request, um, when it's in in Nats, very similarly, you can make a request and then just retry making the request. Um, something that we do with HTTP services. Um, something that is new in the V2.2 is um, instead of um, what used to be a NATS timeout when making a request, now you get a very fast error called the no responders error, because it's kind of like an, anal an analog of the 503 HTTP status. Uh, now you can have the client, your requesters in NATS um, very quickly detect whether there's um, interest in the subject and then try another logic. In terms of at least once delivering NATS, um, what initial support for, for it came uh, in uh, is NATS streaming, in the NATS streaming project, also known as STAN, as the, being the opposite of NATS. Um, it has a, a lot of adoption and it's very easy to use. Now, many people like the, the API, but had some shortcomings given for the, because at the time when it got, uh, when it got developed, uh, namely the horizontal scalability of the whole system uh, was very difficult. Um, and also it didn't have very good integrations with the permissions and accounts features from NATS V2. And as a result, uh, based on the, all the feedback from the community, we got, uh, we have uh, released um, in the first quarter of 2021, the NATS uh, Jetstream, uh, which is the next generation persistent engine uh, for NATS. You can find all of the docs under the GitHub NATSIO Jetstream uh, repo. It was in technical preview, previewed in uh, December uh, 2019, the previous uh, KubeCon. And the clustering uh, was uh, finalized on uh, the first version of its uh, of its um, of Jetstream clustering got released in March 2021. Unlike NAT streaming, it is uh, it is built into NAT, so it is in a subsystem uh, that is part of NAT, and you don't have to use uh, protocol buffers and also another request response protocol to able to persist the messages, which was uh, one of the pain points from NAT streaming. And also, you don't. You're actually the the connection represents the. Um, it, it is not like an, an a session, like uh, in that stream, but the connection. Um, you you. Um, it is not no longer like a session, in, like it was in, in that streaming. It supports. Um, it is based on subjects, so it supports a multi-tenancy and that's V two accounts isolation you can use uh, either file or memory-based storage. Uh, some of the key concepts in Jetstream is that um, you have streams and a stream can be one or more NAT subjects that you decide to uh, have it be persisted. The streams themselves, they can be mirrors from another stream or they can be sourced from multiple uh, streams to create a new stream. You can also have uh, consumers and the consumers that they can be either push or pull based and you decide from where and how you want to uh, cons uh, be delivered those messages uh, or in case of pulling how uh, what is the uh, re delivery time, for example, for each one of those messages. And unlike NETS, you also you do have uh, different types of acknowledgements. You can have like an ACK, a negative ACK, also terminate messages, and I'm going to cover those in a bit as well. But first, uh, I want to introduce something that was fundamental into in the de development of Jetstream um, that we now recognize like a key component for doing operations with NETS, which is a NETS CLI. Much like in Kubernetes, you have something like the kubectl or kubectl that uh, you, where you can point everyone to, okay, so give me the, the output from this kubectl uh, uh, command. And we have adopted this uh, NAT CLI, um, this development, one of the uh, core maintainers from NATS. Um, and this gives you a lot of um, utilities to be able to establish like a common tool set for the NATS community for doing operations uh, on NATS. 
So you can do very from the very um, basic like pop subbing to doing some of the more advanced uh, monitoring and jet stream uh, management all through the NAT CLI. So it's uh, you can, for example, this you can uh, subscribe on full uh, and set a number of uh, messages on the on the bar on the full subject, and this uh, combined with the system account that got introduced with the NATS v2, you can also um, <clears throat> leverage the system account functionality to have more advanced uh, reports of the status of the system. For example, you can now query the number of servers and connections that are uh, connected, uh, do similar things that you can also do with uh, the NAT stop, but all through NATS, which uh, NATS about using a HTTP protocol. This is all getting the messages through NATS. So in this case, I'm getting the server uh, connections uh, from this uh, single server and how many messages have uh, in, are being sent. And uh, using this uh, NATS uh, CLI, we can get started with uh, JetStream because it has all it takes to uh, start creating our streams and consumers. So the simplest setup for JetStream is uh, just start the server, NAT server hy with hyphen JS. Uh, you'll get a, a cool banner um, saying that JetStream got started and by default has a um, dynamic limit, but for the production recommended setups, we um, you should be using the allocating how many how many memory how much memory and storage you want to use for uh, for Jetstream. Uh, setting up Jetstream is um, quite straightforward. It just takes um, explicitly in case of a, a production setup, how much memory you want to use, what is going to be the uh, storage directory. Um, in this case, we're already setting up a system account named uh, Sys. Um, Something that has to be noted is that you cannot make the system account use a Jetstream. So at least you can enable it uh, Jetstream globally for all the accounts, or you can uh, opt in um, a certain number of accounts so that they can, uh, only a certain number of accounts have the Jetstream uh, functionality enabled. And in case of a uh, clustering, it is very similar to how you 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 would set up a regular float of um, NAT servers. In this case, uh, the membership is determined by the uh, cluster routes. Each one of the name the servers that are part of a JetStream cluster requires to have a server name. In this case, we have the this is the configuration for the server name A, and we are part of the cluster that is A B C D E. So in in this case, we have a five nodes as part of the JetStream cl uh, cluster. Um, under the hood is using a raft for the election. There are uh, multiple raft groups um, for, the, the, um, for the whole like API from JetStream. There's a leader, there's also a leader for each one of the streams. In this case, we are monitoring um, <clears throat> what is the status of messages that are being uh, persisted into JetStream. In this case, the leader, it is uh, the server A. And, and again, all of these you can, all of this info you can get as a NAT server report or raft uh, gesturing report using the NAT CLI. And in this case, we know that the node A is the leader of, uh, of the jet stream, uh, what is they call the meta group, meta raft group. And there is one stream named S1 that is using the storage as uh, file-based storage. And the replica, this, the leader from this replica is the node named B, named B. Has a number of other, uh, NAT CLI has another uh, set of functions to be able to uh, manage the membership. So you can ask uh, any of those members to step down. So there's like a new election and there is uh, another member uh, takes over the leadership so you can replace those nodes in case there's a failure, for example. Um, so again, all of through the NAT CLI. 
Again, through the not CLIs, how you can also make uh, streams. In this case, we're making a stream named foo, and a lot of the defaults. And this basically what uh, dictates is that now there is a stream named foo, and any event that is published into foo will also be persisted. Uh, so if now we just Jetstream is just regular NATS. So regular NATS protocol is all it takes to be able to uh, have those messages be persisted. So we sent 10 messages into, into uh, Foo. And then we can create a consumer. Uh, that in this case, it was a pool based consumer that is going to have those, uh, will be fetching each one of those uh, messages. And uh, well, in terms of applications, what you would use is what we call the NATS client uh, Jetstream context. Uh, first, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you how it works in Go. So you, as part of the NATS uh, Go library client library, you will first start a connection uh, with your credentials. In this case, I'm just using a user password, and then call the uh, Jetstream uh, function as part of the. Uh, the connection and that will give you an enhanced type that you can use to uh, persist messages. Again, it's just regular NATS. So classic NATS uh, on foo will also persist message, but uh, they, we didn't change the interface of classic NATS. And in order to get the publish with the act responses, we have a new, we use the um, producer setup that you can get from the uh, Jetstream context. So now, you can publish a message on uh, Hello.js and receive an, an ACK, that acknowledgement that your message got uh, persisted. Um, as part of the metadata from the ACK response, you would know that the sequence number or, and also with um, the message that you published was a duplicate. The push-based consumers using the NAT suggestion cl uh, client context are very similar to uh, regular NAT subscribers, um, they're essentially the same. You're just uh, reusing the JSON context to create on the fly an ephemeral push based uh, consumer. Uh, this is ephemeral, so if you stop this application, uh, as it is in this example, it will replay all of the messages from the beginning. And you can see that you can mix and match both uh, Jetstream based subscriptions and uh, classic NATs. In this case, the Jetstream, the, the Jetstream one is being re-delivered all the previous messages. And the classic one is only getting the new uh, messages. All Everyone subscribing to Foo. Um, push, in order to make um, those applications uh, resist the um, replay on from where they were when, on, on a restart, you need to make a, give them a, a durable name. In this case, my app. Uh, becomes a durable name from this uh, subscriber. And also you can change from the ma uh, auto hacking that it, um, the previous example was uh, doing so that you can uh, manually hack each one of the messages. In this case, uh, it is a simple act that you're done uh, with that message so that you can uh, go to the next uh, consumer sequence. There are multiple types of acts. In this case, um, we're making a synchronous a subscriber, push by subscriber. Uh, you can simple act, you're done. You can ask for the re-delivery of this message or terminate and stop delivering this message or just sing a signal to the server that you're all still working on the, uh, this message. Pool-based subs uh, subscribers um, are a, a bit uh, different. They have their own special API called pool subscribe and the durable name is a required field. So you don't, currently you don't have uh, ephemeral uh, pool-based subscribers. You always require a name. So in this case, you create a pool sub subscriber on foo using the durable name pool. And it's a simple for loop that is gonna be fetching five messages at a time. Um, it will quickly get a set of five messages messages if they are there are any ready. Otherwise, it will wait for a bit before um, retrying uh, next part of the loop. And in this case, uh, giving up. Also new, uh, recommended to check uh, the change log is that um, we also released the initial MQTT support 
WebSockets is part of the release, uh, Jetstream and Jetstream clustering, of course. There's an embedded NATS account server you can use to avoid having the other, using the HTTP based one. Um, Jetstream uses heavily the message headers, but uh, regular NATS descriptions can also use uh, those headers. Um, that's why there were two new protocols, uh, HPOP and HMessage. And other features such as uh, traffic shaping. I uh, recommend you to check the change log from what is new in uh, the NATS documentation. Uh, for the roadmap, we'll have, of course, a new uh, client APIs. Uh, we'll spend more time with uh, WASM ecosystem um, later this year. And also uh, some uh, requested feature like client uh, cluster uh, migration. And uh, thank you for uh, staying for the talk and I'll be back for the questions. Thank you, Anne. Thank you.